Father, thank you very much for today. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for how far you've brought each and every one of us and for where you are taking us to. Thank you for the gift, the precious gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. This season in which we are celebrating his birth and what he has done for us. Thank you very much, Lord God Almighty, that the Holy Spirit is here with each and every one of us to lead us, to guide us, to lead us into all truth and to show us things that are yet to come. May we be sensitive to his leading and his prompting. May we put our hands in his hands. Where we are weak, may we exchange every weakness for his strength because it is available for us. That is our seal. That is what shows that we have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. Even in the few, in the days that are yet to end, to bring this year to a close, may we not lose sight of that fact. But may we yield ourselves to him that every truth that he has taught us, we will hold on to it. And when another year comes round, we'll be able to give praise and glory to his name because he has done it. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'd like to share something about strongholds, the things that hold our minds captive. And... Um, for me personally, it's, it's easier to share with things that I've experienced. So um, a few weeks ago, um, I lost a very dear friend. And it's been a very hard time for me. And when I think about the circumstances surrounding her passing, at a certain point, I was being, should I say, very hard and um, maybe in a way a bit insensitive or not too empathetic because yeah, I was thinking that um, whatever I was, it was something that could just have been avoided. Then the Lord dropped in my spirit. Um, it's a similar situation I had been through and to be precise almost 28 years ago. And it was this. Um, I was expecting and I had fallen ill. But I was being very stubborn you know, um, and thinking that I knew what it was that I I could do to take me through the time and um, to take me through the illness. So I was at home and self medicating. My temperature was rising and I didn't go to the hospital. And it had been about at least two weeks. So finally, two friends came to see me and one took a look at me and decided that no. You have to go to the hospital. And I was so protesting. I said, oh, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, it's under control. And she said, no, I think you need to see a doctor. So finally, they persuaded me. I went with them to their house. They called the doctor. The doctor came. First of all, the doctor said, he took one look at me. And he was like, well, there's something seriously wrong here. But anyway, he didn't show it on his face. And he took my temperature. And to tell the truth, from what he said later on, apparently the thermometer had reached the, the, I mean, the highest it could go. So he took me to the hospital. Um, I was admitted. For three days, I was on admission, and my temperature wasn't coming down. So finally, they told me they had to give me medication. They don't usually give to pregnant women, but they had to give it to me because for them, when it gets to that point, it's either they save um, 
it's easy. They would rather save the mother and then the baby, you know, if the baby makes it, that's fine. But their priority was to save the mother. My temperature finally broke after four days, and I, I was in the hospital for a further four days before I was discharged. Why am I saying all this? You see, sometimes, yes, we are, we are born again Christians. And we um, we have this notion that um, we 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 understand what is happening with us, and we know what it takes that we can do to overcome certain things. But more often than not, you know, when the Bible says that um, today, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your heart. I believe that every single day that we wake up. There is a word, there is something that you are supposed to dislodge. Maybe you've held on to things that you shouldn't hold on to. And here I was being hard on my friend, who unfortunately had passed. But the Lord reminded me that so many years ago, you were in a similar situation. The only difference is that when help finally came, you accepted it. When hell finally came, you accepted it. Sometimes you ask yourself, what is it that prevents us from being who he has called us to be? Yesterday at um, the Bible study, which, as usual, unfortunately, there weren't too many of us, but um, a question came up because of what we were discussing. And it, it, it boils down to what is it that makes us not see or appropriate or um, practice effectively the power and the authority that God has given to us through Christ Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And this scripture came to mind. Um, 2 Corinthians 10, says this 4. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And it goes further. Could you please be, um, cast, yes, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You see, um, you, we can think that we know what it is that will take us through certain seasons, certain parts of life. But if you have a certain mindset, if you have a certain thought that you refuse to let go of, unfortunately, you might think you have the right thought. You might think you are doing the right thing. But the Holy Spirit knows the truth. The Holy Spirit knows what you need. It is only the word of God. It is only the truth of the word of God concerning the situation that you are in that can dislodge the wrong thought that you have. I can sit back now and be hard on somebody else. I can sit back now. But the thing is that by the grace of God, it is as we keep on growing together, as we keep on fellowshipping, as we keep on hearing other people's testimonies, as we keep on doing all that, and like, you know, sometimes we've been told, then, then we will fill in the gap that we have in our daily walk. Maybe I learned something last week, and I thought that was enough. But then this week, maybe something else is shared that actually dots an I or crosses a T 
in something that is missing in my arsenal, in something that is missing in the weapons that I have. Now we are learning that worship is even a weapon. It's not that it's even a weapon. Worship is a weapon. Sometimes when you're down, when you're so low, what, what can bring you out of it? But if, you, if, if I believe that it is in praying a certain way that will bring me out of it, I will keep down that track. Then you realize that something is not dislodging. Something is not adding up. You are still down. Then maybe you, you, you hear somebody tell you that, look, Satan is actually the accuser. Why is it that sometimes we think that we confess the sin. We we ask for forgiveness, but then every now and again, you you realize that 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 feeling of should I say unforgiveness, that feeling of thinking that um, this thing I haven't addressed it the right way. Um, there's some I'm I'm still not making any progress about this one because you see. Satan, in one way, is still accusing, should I say, God to us who are Christians. He's telling, he's making us think that every problem that we have, well, God cannot be trusted. God will not come through for you and all those things. But it is when, I love, I love to share my faults and my mistakes. I don't mind doing it because through that, I've learned so much through being able to give voice to what I think I'm battling with. I've learned so much and somebody, I mean, somebody will come up and say something that will actually help me overcome that. And the same way that he's accusing God before us, he's also accusing us before God. We are told he's the accuser of the brethren. He hasn't got anything good for us. But it is when we spend time with each other, when we, we, we make sure that how, however many gaps we have, we minimize the gaps. That is the only way that we will walk in the boldness and the confidence. At least, at least it's one of the ways, I should say, that we will walk in the boldness and the confidence that Christ has purchased for us. You know, I was reading something the other day, and it says, um, hate cannot drive out hate. If I think something that was said by Martin Luther King, he said, hate cannot drive out hate. It is only love that can drive out hate. So here you are. Somebody has maybe upset you, or somebody has hurt you, and most often than not, it's the people who are close to us who can upset and hurt us the most. And I dig my feet in. And I refuse to let it go. Unfortunately, that person is walking about freely because the person doesn't even know what it is that is eating you up. And then it will be, and then maybe something happens, and then it will say, "Oh, that person was a good Christian. That person was this, and all the accolades come in. But what is this that ends you? What is it that led to that distraction? We couldn't let go of the pain, the bitterness." But it is only the truth in the word of God that can dislodge that. We, it says darkness cannot drive out darkness. No matter how much we hold on to things that are negative, that are contrary to the word of God in our life, the darkness cannot drive it out. It is only the light of God. It is only the light in the truth of the word of God that can drive, that can drive out the darkness. It is only when the light comes and the darkness has to flee. And whether it likes it or not, the darkness will flee. It has to flee because the light has come. We are in this season where it says, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Joy to the world, He has come. There's joy. But the thing, we have to appropriate that joy. It's not going to come and fall on our lap just like that. You see, God has given each and every one of us a free will to make a choice. At the end of the day, when we wake up each day, what choices do we make? What do you decide that I'm going to hold on? That yeah has hurt me, 
I'm not going, I'm, I, I mean, I'm, I'm justified in my son. I'm not going to let it go. Unfortunately, it can, some, sometimes, as I say, the consequences can be dire. You know that scripture, I, I always say that if you ask, I think it's, it's also in Matthew, and I think it's in Luke, but I'm not sure, too sure which chapter it is. But it says, agree with your adversary while you are in the way. You see, and um, before he helps you to this one, and this one helps you to this one, and then the price sometimes we end up paying is quite is is, is serious. It can be very dark. It can be very fatal. But then, if you are decided that look, this thing that I'm holding on to, this grudge that I refuse to let go of, this incident that happened when I was a child. This incident that happened when I was a teenager, this incident that happened when I was in school, that, um, I, I, you know, every now and again it crosses your mind and you're like, no, this thing, I can't let it go. In the long run, you are the person that it will um, eat out, that it will destroy. I had, um, a few, um, well, a couple of years ago, um, somebody made a, a statement um, about, should I say, my life, and it so affected me. So for years, I, um, for years, I wouldn't. There were certain things that if you asked me to do, I wouldn't do it. And I remember one day, um, Pastor Martin was like, "This thing that you are holding on to, it, 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 if you don't, you don't let it go, it, it's shaping your life. You can't go through life just thinking that a statement that somebody made." is what is reflecting on you. What is God's opinion about you? And a lot of us, do we know God, do we believe and know what he says about us? Do we believe that when he tells us that we are loved, we truly are loved? When he tells us that we are accepted, we truly are accepted. When he tells us that he put a shield around us, that no harm, that no weapon that is fashioned by the enemy shall destroy. Do we believe all that? Or we choose to believe the circumstances that we find ourselves in more than the word of God? Beloved, let me say that you should be, we should be able to tell our problems how big how large, how vast, how limitless our God is. And not make the problem so large that it looks like it's insurmountable. Because there is nothing, and I repeat, there is absolutely nothing that can withstand the word of God. There is absolutely nothing that can withstand the truth of the word of God. Imagine sometimes in the night, it is so dark. But when maybe you look up, you can see a single star. That is, and you can see its light. A single star. But it is pitch black. It is pitch black all round. But a single star life can be seen. In this season that we are, think about it. The wise men who came from the east, what did they see? They saw a star and they followed the star. And the star finally came to rest on that stable in Bethlehem. What star are we looking at? May we keep on looking at the star of Jesus Christ in this season because he is the one who has come. He came, he said, he's the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he's the same forever. That means he's eternal. It is only the light of Christ that can drive out any darkness that engulfs us. And you can, you can use Whatever situation you are in that is overwhelming you, it is a darkness. 
whatever it is. Maybe your child is gone astray. Maybe your wife is being some way. Maybe your husband is being some way. Maybe you don't even know where your next meal is going to come from. Maybe you don't know where you're going to get money. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it is emotional. Maybe it's psychological. Maybe it is mental. Maybe it's a health challenge. Whatever it is, whatever that darkness comes to see, it is only the light of the Word of God that can dislodge everything, every stronghold, everything that refuses to budge. It is only the light of God that can do it. May we hold on to that truth. May we yield ourselves and make it a practice because, you see, at the end of the day, it is the things that we practice every day that makes us. It is what we practice every day, not what I practiced last week, not what I practiced two weeks ago, not what I practiced last year. It is the new thing. He says, sing unto the Lord a new song. It is a new thing. His mercies they are new every morning. Today's mercies are new, whether we like it or not, whether we believe it or not. Today's mercies, they are new. Let's appropriate the new message today and let go of what happened yesterday. Let's appropriate the new message today. Let us not harden our hearts today when we, he- we feel him prompting, when he- we feel him leading us, when we feel him nudging us to go down a certain way. Let the new message, the message that are new every single morning, may that be what will hold us, what will keep us through this day and tomorrow will appropriate again. Like the manna that the children of Israel, they went with told, collect it for today. Collect it for today. Some people decided they wanted some for tomorrow. It got spoiled. Let each and every single day that we wake up, that we have breath in our nostrils, let us appropriate the new mercies of God, that it will dislodge the things that we've held on to that haven't made any changes in our life. Shall we pray? Was the time is all gone. Heavenly Father, thank you that you knew the day would come. Thank you that you would give me the grace to share what I said. I pray in the name of Jesus that maybe a single nugget is lost in each and every heart that is listening to me and that will listen to me later. Nothing is impossible with you. Absolutely nothing. You said even if it was only one of us, Father, you would still have sent your son Jesus Christ to die for us. This is the season in which you brought him. This is the season in which you invaded the life of Mary. And she said, Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Father, your word concerning each and every one of us still stands. May we appropriate it the right way. May we make the choices that, Lord, will make the difference in our lives. May we share our stories. May we share our testimonies. May we share the things that you've done. And even when all seems bleak and all seems dark and gloomy, may we still know that it is only your light that can drive out the darkness. In whatever circumstance any brother or sister of mine find themselves today, Lord, reveal yourself afresh to them by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And when we have cause to meet again, Lord God Almighty, may we be able to give you praise and glory for the wonderful things that you have done and continue to do in our lives. I thank you and I bless you. And I worship you, Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, in the name that is above every other name, the name at which every single knee shall bow, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have prayed and we say thank you. Amen.